Hey guys, it's Rob here, and today we're going to be looking into the history of Showbiz Pizza Place and Chuck E. Cheese in Little Rock, Arkansas. This area is interesting because one of the locations kept a very distinct showbiz element for a very long time, which we'll get into later. For now, I'd like to thank Mike for requesting this video. I would give a more proper name, but the common in which the request was made in doesn't seem to exist anymore. As usual, I've gathered information from multiple different sources, which I'll be linking in the description. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, as in the next Showbiz Pizza Place video, I'll be announcing something big, which will be changing this channel in a way I think you Showbiz Pizza Place slash Chuck E. Cheese fans will enjoy. Anyways, let's get into the history of Showbiz Pizza Place and Chuck E. Cheese in Little Rock, Arkansas. As usual, I'll only be covering the basic information of this city. Little Rock got its name from a stone outcropping on the bank of the Arkansas River that was used as a landmark. The area wasn't suitable for settlement, though, due to frequent flooding. Little Rock became Arkansas's capital in 1820, which it has been ever since. How the area became suitable for settlement, I'm not sure. It says land was purchased around the area, so it may have not been directly in Little Rock. I don't know. As of 2022, the population of the city is 202,405, making it the most populous city in Arkansas. Phew, that's quite the long name, isn't it? The Rodney Parham Road location opened on December 22, 1982 as a showbiz pizza place, the second one to open in Arkansas. There's actually quite a few photos of this place as a showbiz pizza place, so let's start with this one of the storefront. We can see the logo they used, which likely points to this being from the earlier years of the 80s. There's also a yearbook entry which has a couple of photos from this location, including one with a billy bob walk around. If I'm being honest, I'm not 100% sure about the history of these walkarounds and what year this walkaround came from. All I know is that it's not Creative Engineering's version of the walkaround, which looks like this. It looks like the corporate showbiz walkaround, so it may be from the mid to late 80s, though that's just a guess. This next photo shows a hallway in the building, which appears to have been taken around the kitchen area. This photo shows a sign at the location, which again, based on the logo, was likely taken in the early to mid 80s. The last two photos are of the Rock of Fire explosion, and the two photos combined show off the entirety of the three stage. This one was likely taken in the early 80s due to the fact that Smitty's Super Service Station is still present, as well as Beach Bear's hair is still being present, something I don't see much in these photos. Usually, it's just hairless beach bear. Also, Mitzi in this photo looks like her beta variant. It's quite refreshing seeing such nice photos of a location's rock of fire explosion, honestly, since usually the photos aren't very good. Unfortunately, this is all the photos we have of the location as a showbiz pizza, and no videos have surfaced of it during this time. The location also got the 1988 remodel, but I don't know when. Beginning in 1989, due to a disagreement between Aaron Fector and Showbiz Pizza Time Inc., concept unification occurred, in which every Showbiz Pizza place would convert their Rock of Fire Explosion ban into Munch's Make Believe ban. Parham would be one of the vast majority of locations to undergo this change, receiving it in 1991. What's funny is that there is an article about this location being recently converted into a Chuck E. Cheese's in October of 1994, though that would have been impossible since the last location to convert would have been at least a year and a half prior to this article, so I don't understand why the article says recently. The article also uses terms such as converting, which again is impossible since this article was published in 1994. This location also received the major 90s remodel, which can be seen from the Phase 3 exterior. We have a single photo from the 90s which mainly shows off the Chucky walk around during this time, the usual derby donning head with what looks like track clothes with a bow tie odd. We can also see Helen and Jasper in the back, both with latex masks, which makes sense considering this was still the 90s. The store was also acquired by corporate alongside North Little Rock on January 30th, 1998. A video from October of 2000 shows off the game room, and we see things such as the booths used at the time, the games, of course, and a ball pit. It still shocks me a bit to see this stick around for this long, as I'm sure by this point they were being considered quite dirty. We also see some 90s decor as well, not sure if it's specifically Phase 3 or not though. Unfortunately, there's no footage of the animatronics, so we have no clue what they looked like at this point. We do have another video from December of 2003 though, that shows off more of the location, this time focusing on the showroom. 
We see Chuck has his cool Chuck attire on at this point, as well as the plastic mask. The other characters also seem to have gone in plastic masks at this point as well. Luckily, they move around well here, which is nice to see. The curtains also still operate here, which makes sense since they weren't turned off until 2005. We also get to see the Chuck walk around, which looks like a Venture Chuck, but he's wearing a different hat, a different shirt, and pants. It's interesting to say the least. They also still had Duke's drum front around this time, which is cool to see. Also, we can see here that Pasquale appears to have at least one of his latex hands, which is interesting. He may have also had his latex mask still, but we don't get to see his face here, so I can't confirm that. One more thing I should mention is that Munch Jr. appears to be gone by this point, which also means Pizza Cam could have also been gone. The building animatronic is still here though, so they didn't get rid of all their prop animatronics. We also see some of the decor in the sky tubes during this time. There's a couple clips from 2007 that show off the Chucky animatronic, which looks about the same as he did before, aside from the fact that he no longer has his tooth. From what I can tell, the store didn't really change during the 2010s, but we do have some photos and a video to go through. Firstly, although this location never received the Phase 4 remodel, it did seem to get some Avenger Chuck aspects, such as this door artwork and the menu piece. We also get a good look at the game room and the sky tubes, which seem to have been downsized at some point since they're definitely smaller here. This picture shows off the Chucky walk around of the 2010s, which was Avenger Chuck. The Chucky animatronics seemed to remove his Cool Chuck shirt in exchange for an Avenger shirt, but he kept the Cool Chuck shorts and Cool Chuck cap. We also see that all characters for sure had plastic masks by this point, which is unsurprising. Pizza Cam was also for sure gone by this point, also unsurprising. Also, can we talk about how retro this photo looks? This showroom looks awesome, and it's now that I should point out a very important detail I've left out. Specifically, the wood paneling on the sides of the three stage. These come from the Showbiz Pizza Place days, when the location first opened, and we're still at this location in the 2010s. Insane how something like this stayed up until then, and it really adds to the retro look of this showroom. Unfortunately, this location would not stay like this forever, and on April 19th, 2014, the location closed permanently. The reason for this is because it was relocating to a new location, which we'll talk about in a bit. We see some photos from a month after the location closed showing the completely empty area. Also, yes, the animatronics seem to have been removed by this point. As of September 2023, this area remains unused and has not been converted into anything. As for the animatronics, we have no clue what happened to them for sure. They could have been sent to another location to be used for parts, or they could have been destroyed. We don't know. If any of you know what happened to the animatronics at this location, please comment down below what happened to them. The 2706S Shackleford Road location opened on April 28, 2014 as a Chuck E. Cheese's. It opened with Phase 5, having the Phase 5 exterior as well as a Circles of Light stage without an animatronic. This is the first location in Arkansas to have no animatronics. Side note, I had no idea this wall design was actually a part of Phase 5 slash 4. I always thought it was Phase 3 design since it looks so much like the style of Phase 3. Anyways, this location haven't changed much since opening, and I don't think they ever had sky tubes since the photos of the location don't seem to show them. As of September 2023, this location still has Phase 5 and still has the Circles of Light stage without an animatronic. I don't know when this location is receiving 2.0, but honestly, this location could get 2.0. I don't really care for the Circles of Light stages without the animatronics, and I think that we're not losing much with this location remodeling. The fact that they replaced the previous location with this Phase 5 one is already sad enough to me, so I don't really care if it gets 2.0 or not. Overall, one of these locations was interesting to talk about, with how retro it looked even in 2014 by the time it closed, and it was cool seeing this location and what it had to offer. As for the other location, there's pretty much nothing interesting about it. Overall though, the Little Rock locations are interesting, but mainly the first one. Thank you guys for watching this video. It was interesting seeing a location such as Little Rock have such a retro look over 20 years after it underwent concept unification, and think that it was a pretty cool location that is unfortunately gone now. My next video will be covering two different areas, Spokane and Linwood, Washington. That's because they both tie into each other nicely, which you'll see when that video drops. One of the locations was also home to the last Cyberamic 3 stage. If you're interested in seeing that, make sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you're notified when that drops. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video.